Shalom, brothers and sisters. All honor and great glory goes to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. In the name of Yahusha HaMashiach. This is an update, brothers and sisters. Um, my purge is going excellent, brothers and sisters. Um, shout out to Hadassah for sending me those documents. Um, Clements, some scriptures from Clements and uh, the Shepherd of Hermes. That really helped solidify what I read um, in the New Testament. In the letters of Paul, it kind of really brought it together and uh, helped me push forward in other areas I need to push forward in and give me final understanding. Final understanding is breaking forth so that I can be purged completely out, brothers and sisters. And this is the process that I've been going through since I since my awakening. It's a, it's a process of purging out. And also Ezekiel 37, building uh, a new man uh, from scratch, from bones, dead bones. And so uh, I don't know how y'all purge out has been going, but this is a time of purging out and rebuilding. And uh, some of y'all are freaking out because... You're tripping, you're still stumbling, you're, well, you're going to do that as you cleanse, cleanse out the leaven, as you rebuild. Uh, we didn't know the most highest ways. We're just starting to learn these ways and put on these ways and build up these habits of holiness and righteousness, replacing all that um, the world has put in us. And it's different for everyone. And the time and length is different for everyone when when that old man will be fully purged out. And uh, that's what this channel is about, is um, building a new man, a new woman, and um, purging out that old one so that you can see the man and the woman that the most time is looking for. It's clearly written in scriptures, but our eyes got the, the blinders got to be lifted in many different areas in our lives for us to see. So he's dealing with us little by little as we can understand, as we can process it and then adapt to that. And, you know, he, he, he knows us. He will work with you if you want to work with him. You have to long suffer with him and have patience with him year by year. And let's not just throw everybody underneath the bus because they make a few errors and mistakes or even have a little bad discernment. Let's not do that, brothers and sisters. Let's bear with one another's fruits and uh, admonish one another, extol one another, and beat it for one another. Now, if someone refuses to repent of something and they just continue on, then that's when you have to put them away. Let them know that you're serious. Hey, I got to put you away because of such and such. But let them know. At least they'll be working on that while you're gone. They could be working on that, thinking about it. At least the seed, the seed could be planted. And later on the line, that person may realize, wait a minute, man, I done messed up right here. That's what that person was talking about. Oh, man. And then you'll be able to work on that. And you'll see your eye will be open. You better fix that. Uh that's why we shouldn't be so quick to judge one another in our faults and our errors. And he's especially during this time of awakening. This is an awakening process. So don't freak out if you're tripping right back into that particular sin or habit. Keep getting picking yourself back up and keep building yourself back up. And you keep pushing forward. Because eventually that thing will release out of you. And then it will be gone. It will be as if it, if you've never done it before. I've, I've experienced that before. Uh, especially with smoking cigarettes. In 2006, whenever I quit, uh, there was like a release. And the memory of that thing was released as well. And I never went back. 
is as if I'd never smoked before. And that's with other things such as masturbation. Once that thing was released and it was gone, and the memory of that thing was released as well. And everything that came with it was, was gone. And I got my final last humps that I need to cross over and I'm about to cross them uh, to where I will be without spot, blemish or wrinkle, as the scriptures say, and uh, be obeying that commandment. Go and sin no more. These are the things y'all need to be working on. He will fill your cup up. He will replace all that um, evil and nastiness that's in you with goodness and good habits. This is your focus. If if you haven't made it there, you, you need to be talking to the most high and figuring out why are you focusing on all these other things when you're not even right with him yet. If the most high is dealing with you, these are the things you're focusing on. Number one, you making it into the kingdom and no one's still in your crown. Not being destroyed for lack of knowledge. And putting on these habits of righteousness and holiness. And, and purging out the leaven of your mind so that your actions won't follow that, that wickedness that was in you. But it will follow goodness that you were replacing it with. These are the things you need to be focusing on, brothers and sisters. These examples are being set on this channel as I go through through the motions, as I go through trials, tribulations. You know, I'm putting it out there. Errors, mistakes, exposing myself, bearing my own shame. And, and Most High loves a humble person that will put all that out there like that. Confess your sins one another. That you may cross over these humps and become the man that the Father wants is looking for as in a child and become the woman that the fathers look for in a child. You understand? You have to become as a child to make it because just as the, we came out of misery M, only the children crossed over. The rest of them, they had Egypt still in them except for Nun and Caleb and their family they followed after holiness and righteousness, right? And Moses. And Aaron. And uh, Miriam as well, you know, after they had their little faults, you know, but they got past that. And they continued on in holiness and righteousness, brothers and sisters. That's what you need to be focused on, learning, building up these righteous habits. Focus on your change of mind and heart. You can't afford to be sitting up there, um, which which is one thing I'm working on, putting away ev all of the movies. I'm starting to see that these are, that that's, that's not right, brothers and sisters. Even certain movies that you watch, even if you put away the ones that, that you know you shouldn't be watching, period, even if you put those away, even the ones that seem to be okay, ain't okay now. And I'm, I'm seeing this right now. I'm seeing how the enemies get doors through just their movies. And these will be considered the, some of the classic ones, you know, the old school ones that didn't have all that, even them. So, that's being purged out, and I'm fixed to move away from that 100%. I've been working on that for a while, but I had to get the understanding of why and how they're doing things through them to your mind, subconsciously and consciously. So that's finalizing with me as well. Uh, one step at a time, brothers and sisters. You know, the most I brought us into the land, into our land, one step at a time. One, little by little, he brought us in into the land of Canaan to conquer it. We didn't just rush the whole scene and, and just try to fight everybody at the same time. Little by little, so we wouldn't be overwhelmed. Same thing with our awakening. Little by little, he's awakening you in different areas. And you, you're experiencing uh, 
victories and sometimes you fall and you, you you lose it so you pick yourself back up and you learn from that you get a little bit stronger and you keep pushing forward don't wallow in that thing just let it let it you know repent of it ask for forgiveness and then ask for the help to understand more to conquer it and he'll give you whatever else he need to give you at that moment to conquer and you just keep on until that thing is, is, is put away, slayed. But don't give up. Don't ever give up and give in. Keep pushing forward. So that's it with that. And I got a dream that I want to talk about. I want to ask y'all interpretation of. Uh, just to see if y'all. Any of you would uh, have the same type of interpretation. Uh, I recently had a dream where I was in a tub, in a pool of water with some Hebrew children. And they were splashing and playing. I was playing and everybody was splashing. And uh, something moved me to go look over the edge of the pool. And I went to the edge of the pool and I looked down. And the pool was lifted up on some type of pillar. Actually, I didn't see what, what was holding the pool up, but I just assumed, I guess, that it was on a pillar or maybe a hand was holding that up, hand holding it up. But when I looked down there, you know, there was grass and trees and stuff. And then there was this lion crouched looking up at me intensely and kind of grimacing a little bit, moving side to side in, in that hunt mode. Like, ooh, if you fall down here, I'm going I'm to tear you apart. It was that type of intense look, looking dead at me. Eyes just focused and intense, waiting for the kill. You know, waiting for me to just fall over or wanting me to fall over. But I felt the most intense peace, rest, protection. I mean, everything inside of that pool. It's, it's un undescribable what I felt in those waters with the children, you know, the Hebrew children. And, uh, but looking down, I'm telling you, woo wee, if I fell down there, that thing was going to tear me to pieces, to shreds. And, uh, now I'm thinking in this particular dream, you know, after that, I woke up. That what was waiting on me down there was Hashitan. I don't know. Could that have been Hamashiach? If I did fall away and he, the lion of coming back to tear every, all the sinners a new one, you know? Y'all hear what I'm saying? But I'm leaning more toward that. That was the enemy of my soul waiting on me to drop on out of there. But. The peace and the rest for my soul was amazing, y'all. It was the protection. It was absolute. You know what I mean? When you in them waters, being as a child, with that protection underneath the wing of the Most High, the, the arm of the Most High, and he's lifted you up, where... Nothing else can get up there to you. There was no way for him to get up to me. There was no way, no way to crawl. Because he was just like moving side to side, looking with intensity. Like he wanted. Like he, he was just waiting on for someone to fall out the pool. That's what he was waiting on. So y'all tell me what y'all think about that. Okay, I, I got some questions about this calendar, right? Um, I'm working on this calendar. I got to draw another line here because I need three boxes on each side of each day right here in this box. And I'm going to complete this. Uh, I was looking for somebody else to do a calendar as well. Uh, professionally, just the first month. Right along with me because I'm going to complete the first month. Then I'm going to do a full video with all scriptures explaining everything. And we're going to go month for month. And we're going to go over the 
the scriptures for each feast day, including the ones that some of y'all may not know about or celebrating. Oops, I forgot to fix this. Uh, this is my play calendar, which I drew up, which I'm experimenting with. You know, when I'm using different boxes, coloring box, you know, I'm highlighting stuff like I did in the other video when I was showing y'all this um, particular handwritten calendar. And uh, I'm going to do a professional one, but for now, I got the trial and error of this thing, right? But anyway, uh, on the 12th month, there are like three feast days on the 12th month. I got to look this one up again. I forgot the name of this one here. I think it's dealing with, I'm not sure if it's dealing with the uh, Judith. The one that went into the camp and cut off that king head. But I got to look this one up again. Uh, but right here, this is the feast of um, the one with Judas Maccabees. Where the most I say this uh, with, it, with him. And this one is, these two is with Esther and Mordecai. And these three days were to be observed in the 12th month. From the 13th, 14th, and 15th. Even though they happen at different time periods. But that's how they fall. And, and, and these three days, you are to give gifts. And uh, when I do the video, I'm going to have all scriptures for all these feast days. And there are four other ones that we are to observe, brothers and sisters. I don't know if you all know about it. Uh, it's dealing with the, the flood. There were at the beginning of four for the months we were supposed to observe him um, bringing us in, well, bringing Noah in the ark and sealing him up. And there was a day to observe when he opened up the deep and when he shut up the deep. And when Noah, I think when Noah came out the ark, I'm going to have all the information together and I'm going to have it marked on the calendar. I don't have that, those four days marked just yet, but I'm going to have that together real soon. Uh, before the beginning of the new year. And also, y'all already know or should know that we're supposed to blow the trumpet at the beginning of every month. So that's that's also another day. Um, wait a minute. Let me. I should have turned all these around before. But anyway, this is the first month. And. What I found is that there is with with the four days that I mentioned with Noah added to this, there's a hundred observance days. There's 52 Sabbaths, of course, because there's 52 weeks. And then there's 44 other um, feast days, observance days that we have to recognize and participate and do things in. Now, I didn't even include the 48 days of the Feast of Weeks. We know that we got to um, observe the first day and uh, treat it as a Sabbath day and on the 50th day as well. Right here. Wait a minute, that's the fourth month? I didn't get the third month? Uh-oh. What? Okay, that's the second month. I didn't get the third month. Let me go get the third month. Okay, this is the third month. Where we have to observe the 50th day. But there's 48 days in between. That we just count. Now, as far as I know, that's all we're doing is counting. We don't have to do anything special on these count days. But I did box them and mark them anyway. So we can count them out. And you will always end up uh, with the 50th day on the first, uh, 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 during the first week. I mean, the 12th week. Or let's just say. The third week of the third month 
on the first day. It would always land right here. Every year it won't change. And same thing with the first day. It would always be on the last week. During the first day. I mean during the first day of the week. In the first month. It would always be right here. Every year it would never change. So what I want someone to do is. Do a calendar like this. Professionally. And um, you see how I, I kind of played around with these different things. You see me coloring in here and then the next one I got it circled. I got that boxed off and make it a little bit clearer. But then you see me scribble here and then I end up changing it. Um, one second. I end up changing it here by doing something like that. So I've been playing around with these different boxes, putting different colors. See how I can make it e a little bit easier to read or see. Um, you can do the same if you like. And I just need someone to, who has one of those programs that can do a, a good calendar, professional looking calendar, like the one I'm, I'm making and putting together. But have information on there like this. And as you can see, I changed this to Star Constellation. This is going to be where the Star Constellation is, is in. Now, I have a question. If someone knows the Paleo Hebrew Star Constellations, please let me know. That's the information I'm looking for. Uh, if y'all can do that, great. If you already have it, send it to me. And uh, we're going to try to fill in the Paleo Hebrew name, name of the constellations and send me pictures and all information about that if you can. For now, we got to use the Greek, you know, the Greek star constellation chart and try to follow it. So that that's the first thing I'm asking someone to do is to do a month by month calendar like like you see me doing here. If you got that talent and skill to do something like that, to make a chart and I need someone else to do a chart like this. Um, except for the first day is going to start right here and I'll explain that in a minute. Something exactly like this with that other information on top right here and scriptures down here to support the feast days and um, uh, all the feast day information. Something very similar to this because um, I want us to have a calendar like this and one broken down month by month like this. But of course on a professional scale like I'm building here where you can actually... <laughs> Read it. It's not so ghetto. <laughs> but as soon as I finish this, I'm going to do a complete full video explaining everything all the way through, including on um, the first day. Now, I, I got one more question, actually, but I'm going to get to that in just a moment. I started. The first calendar over here as day one on because the most high created um the, the sun, the moon, and the stars on the fourth day. But thanks to um uh, uh Seed of Israel he uploaded a video of Judiah who explained um the calendar. We had everything correct except for the first day, and I understood why. He had his first day right here. And I saw another video. Uh, the most I had me come across another video while I was researching it. Where someone else started their first day here as well. And then he gave me the understanding. Okay, on this fourth day, I was creating the sun, the moon, and the stars. And then when I was done, I saw that it was good. In the evening and morning was the fourth day. Naturally, he would have started everything in motion here because this is where he started his 
his uh he started creating life on day five so you got those two things right there and it makes sense and it lines up with scriptures so if you start your first day on day five and you do your one through 14 count you get your passover in the middle of the week in the midst of the week that lines up because Hamashiach died on the, in the midst of the week in the middle of the week right you got three days here three days there seven you know uh, this is the middle middle day my 14 day was right here and i was like wait a minute that ain't quite the middle of the week and uh so these other videos came through helped me understand that i was one day off and once that one day fell in line everything else fell in place and so testing it with scripture It lines up. That's why this is day one. So we know that Moses was told to start his day one right here. So that the Passover will be on the 14th day in the evening. And then um, we know that Hamashiach died on the 14th day in the evening. He was in the grave for three days and three nights. And this lines up. He would have risen at the end of the Sabbath. And that's when um, Mary and him saw them on the first day. So all using scripture, it lines up. Now, the equinox will always be on day 364 on the 31st day of the 12th month, in the ending of that month. And according to the Gregorian calendar, that's on the 16th, March 16th. Now, the only thing I didn't understand with some of them, uh, with a, one another brother, he started his um, first day after these three days he put one right here and then he started his day so his 20th started over here I didn't understand that because I mean I, I think he's looking at the creation week and counting these as zero days three zero days and he's putting it over here He's putting three zero days here, and then he's starting his week off. And I, I, I just don't understand that part. But I don't think it's right because it doesn't line up with scriptures. You know, if you count your fourteen days, right? Let me see. You got, you'll end up right here. This will be day fourteen. Then, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. You know, it'll be off. Wouldn't it? It would be off with scripture. It would line up. So, uh, everything has to line up with scripture. So, we got that part correct. This part is correct. This part is correct. And uh, using the app, the uh, app, that app you can download. Where you get the information on the lunar cycles and the sun cycles and the times and, and the stars. Uh, that's the app I used. And it seems to be accurate. As far as I know. And uh, March 16th was the equinox day. And if we start off with March 16th, which was, I think, a Thursday or something, or Tuesday, Monday. Let, let me see right quick. Um, March 16th is a Monday. So on this calendar, I'm going to mark in this box the Gregorian calendar, starting March 16th here, because it's an equinox day, the last day of the month of our month but this is March 16th then you will go 17th 18th 19th so the 19th would be the Sabbath day right which on the Gregorian calendar is Wednesday even though it's our seventh day uh, it's a Wednesday on the Gregorian calendar but it's actually the third day of our first month 
Y'all see how this is? It's working out. So the 19th would be right here on a Wednesday. So the Sabbath would fall on a Wednesday. And so this Wednesday just passed. So um, this is where I'm going to start. Now that I got this finalized, y'all know what I mean? Uh, it's going to be on Wednesdays all the way down. Brothers and sisters, but I'm going to mark all this on the calendar. As soon as I'm done, I'm going to do a full, complete video with scriptures and everything. Explaining everything. This might be a three-part series. But at least once you understand it, that's it. You don't have to worry about nothing else after that. Uh, except for this, this, the Greek star constellation. As y'all can see, I've marked the gates in the book of Enoch as well. Uh, where it's talking about the sun passed through the fourth gate. And all it does is go up to the sixth gate. It goes fourth gate, fifth gate, sixth gate. Then it turns back around and go back through the sixth gate. And then it works its way back down to the first gate. Then back to the first gate, back up to the third, and then back to the fourth. And it just repeats the same cycle. Once you understand this cycle, it's so easy, y'all. And it will never change year by year. It, this year will never change. The only thing that will change mainly is the Gregorian calendar. And for three years, this moon cycle, um, it would it would alternate and change a little bit. But that's why we're going to do a three year study on this moon cycle to see the pattern of the moon. And when does it come back to its original point? I'm thinking every three years because it falls 10 days behind. So you got 10 days per year. That's 30 days. And that um, that should put the moon right back at, the, at where it was in, you know, the first year. If y'all can understand what I'm saying. So that's three years. That's just a theory, though. I would have the map on a wall. Three years worth of maps, you know, of the other of moon cycles and look at the patterns and figure out the pattern. It might just be a two year pattern, but it could be three, four, five year pattern until it comes back to the original point. So I'm still studying that the cycles of the moon and understanding it. And how it falls 10 days behind every year. And this pattern. So once we figure out that pattern, we'll be able to chart maybe a three year um, calendar. And it will never change. It will always be three years for the moon to come back to its original point and start again. Once we figure that out. But this box won't change. The, the stars and its cycle won't change. It'll be the same. These days won't ever change, and the feast days box will never change. But the Gregorian calendar, of course, will change. Now, brothers and sisters, um, with the star constellation, uh, I need y'all to get the Hebrew version of this. If you have it, send it to me. But concerning this Greek it's a little bit off because the Pisces actually start over here somewhere. Then it rolls into the new month. So what I did, what I just put the Pisces right here and ended Aquarius right here. Uh, so if you know if the, the Most High has certain constellations that begin at every month and end at every month. To free flow with this sun. One through three, three hundred sixty-four days, and come back to the same point again and start over again. Let me know, but I know that the Greek doesn't do it like that. It there is a little bit off, and that sounds like a fusion to me. So what I did for the first seven months, I just pushed these few little days over here, so it can be even. Start off even in the month, beginning of the month. 
But on the eighth month, I had a, I had a problem. Oops. Okay, Virgo goes all the way through the seventh month, right? And then you get to the eighth month. Virgo is still going for two more weeks. What's up with that? Why all of a sudden on the eighth month, Virgo is extended two weeks into here, and then you got Libra going for only three weeks. One week into this first month, and then you got Scorpio for one week. Then this Ofa, Ofuachus, whatever you want to call this constellation, goes for three weeks as well. Doesn't it sound like some confusion going on here? Even though, even if this cycle stays the same every year, it never changes. Uh, it, it, it starts in the other month and then ends a little bit short the next month. So there is more to have for us to understand about the most highs. How we read the stars every month and what clusters and what patterns and what names we gave them, brothers and sisters. So uh, that information I need to find and understand and put on here. But for now, I have to use the Greek um, star constellation for now, unless y'all done did that. Y'all done found that information. Uh, please send it to me, you know, that way I can put it on here. But I, I still want to test this one here. Starting at the beginning of the year, the Greek version and see if it actually rolled back to the same every year. So I'm be testing both of them. The Greek to see if this pattern stays the same the way they got it. And um, test our version. If we can find our version. For the next couple of years. So this th this calendar is a test calendar. Okay. We're going to test it. Once we get everything set. Get it professionally complete. Um, we're going to test it. For the next. Two or three years. And make sure everything is straight. Brothers and sisters. So. Uh, if you want to help me making a month by month calendar your version what you come up with let me know i'm going to continue to make um, this particular version and i'm going to put it out there and have it available for y'all to download and we're going to test test this over the next two or three years and make any changes or adjustments along the way and uh, again also i wanted someone to make a calendar Similar to this, if you got that type of skill to do something like that, if you got that type of programming on your computer to be able to create something like this, let me know. And I'll send you what I got and we'll make the changes, necessary changes up here and put scriptures and stuff down here. But we want it to be just like this and on the wall next to our month by month calendar as well. Or it can be like this. This is another one I found. Uh, well, actually, a Brother Timothy sent me this one, I believe. So uh, appreciate that, Brother Timothy, for all the, the things that you be sending me. They do help. The only thing is that we would start day one right here and the rest of the calendar would be adjusted accordingly. Same thing on this one. Day one would be right here. Uh, and of course you would have to leave out all this scribbly writing. This is actually a lunar cycle calendar um, where they list the lunar cycles, you know, the full moon and the... Um, new moon but 
we are told not to go by that because the you can't follow the moon every month because it, it's it's behind. The sun is the lead, is the head. The moon is like the the wife, the back, you know, the the, the help me, and then the stars is is the, like the children. You know, the twelve sons of Jacob. And um. They back up the father, you know, the, I mean, the, the son, if you want to look at it that way. And uh, they follow after the son, you know, the, the, the head, the lead. But anyway, so that's the questions I had for you. Well, that's the help I needed and some questions I needed to ask you concerning this calendar. And again, we're going to. OK. And if you can create a chart like this or the other one, that's fine. And if you want to try to do something like this as well, that's fine as well. Um, where you would have the days of the month listed right here. One through 30, one through 30, one through 31. Uh, that's cool as well. Or if you just want to print out something like this and put it right next to the calendars to, I don't know, just as reference points, uh, that's up to you. But I'm going to uh, upload these particular charts, not right now, um, as soon as I do at least day one of the calendar, as soon as I'm done with day one, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to upload this day one. I mean, month one. Sorry about that. As soon as I'm done with month one with this calendar, uh, I'm going to upload all of that information there. And then I'll make the full video. Hopefully I'll be able to get all the other months done professionally. By the time I do these videos, if not, I'm just going to use these, these months right here. As you can see, I was really trying different things. <laughs> I'm just going to use this in its place. So how many I get done, I'm going to use those first. And if, if you're able to do this full calendar with at least these four boxes done, you know, you, you have the, the sun count, one through 364 days, and your month count, and your whatever gate the sun is in, and the Virgo, I mean the star constellation right here, and the feast days, um, if you're able to complete that I'll just use yours whoever decide they want to uh, help me with this and uh, we'll both make one uh, calendar and we'll have both available so that there'll be some options and choices which um, we can mix and match or you know if they want to download mine they can download mine they can download yours I'll upload all of yours on uh, on the website. And we have some options, some choices. You know what I mean? So let's get this done, brothers and sisters, so we can get these feast days right. And um, get these Sabbath days right. Because that's a sign between us and him. We've been doing the wrong Sabbath days. We've been doing the seven day Sabbath of the Gregorian calendar. And some years ago, I, I discovered that was wrong. And But of course, I didn't understand how it was wrong back then. And I started my journey of understanding. You know, some of these elders promoting that Gregorian calendar and they should be they should know better by now. Right. So y'all got to watch out, 
you know, for some of these people calling themselves elders and stuff. And um, they haven't even got to this point yet. See, this is how you're going to know a, a real teacher. They're going to be, they're going to have those same signs that came upon them from the scriptures. And they're going to be, um, they're going to have all this stuff together, brothers and sisters. They're going to have all this together. All the errors and mistakes are going to be worked out. They're not going to be just stagnant, staying in one place for years and years. No, they're going to progress. They're going to learn. They're going to pull out all this leaven. And they're going to progress, brothers and sisters. This, a, a real elder is going to know all this information, brothers and sisters. And that's why I classify myself more of a deacon to go into that phase of a teacher but I had to shut down to complete what I need to complete and to purge out what I need to finish purging out and to, to get out all the leaven and errors and mistakes completely that's why I said I, I don't know how long I'm be away um, from um, doing this full time but he allowed me to do the um, Messiah video because there was some of you starting to get convinced of that he, that the Most High <laughs> didn't plan this in the Old Testament. And we brought up so many scriptures. And I'm doing part five as well. I'm upload part five. And that's going to complete the series. Now, I did mention that in part four and a half that there might be a part five. So... I'm going to complete the series with part five with more scriptures, different scriptures, different books. And uh, that's going to be it. My part will be done concerning the most high salvation. And uh, I'm going to redo all of them on my new channel whenever I return. So this is just like the warm up, the practice I'm put together a little bit better uh, on the new channel. A little bit more fluid rather than just kind of going through scriptures by itself. It's going to be a little bit more fluid. And um, I'm going to put that together on the new channel, Yah Almighty Ministries, when I am released and come back. So thank you all for standing with me. Keep me in your prayers. Pray for me. Fast for me as well, brothers and sisters. I'm praying for y'all. And um, I'm about to fast for y'all as well. So let, let's, let's practice these things. Practice praying for Zion. Fasting for Zion. Pray for all your brothers and sisters in the body. Pray for our faith. Pray for our um, awakening. Pray for our building of the new man and woman. Pray for all these things that are necessary to be a child of the Most High. Pray for our sinlessness. Pray for, for us to obey that commandment. Go and sin no more. I believe that. And the Most High is bringing that out in me because I truly believe that. I know that the Messiah said that for a purpose. The Father put that word in him. And uh, it is possible for you to stop sinning in your mind and in your body, in your actions. Where some people are still convinced that that's impossible. And they're going to get what they believe in. It's going to be impossible for them to stop. But for me, it's possible. It's already ingrained in me. I know it's possible. And I'm being shown how. How it can be done. And I'm... I'm going to be focusing on that when I return on uh, the new man and new woman mostly and how you can apply love to all situations to fulfill all the laws with, with just that one word and of course with the fruits of the spirit going to be surrounding that one word and uh, you're going to build up these righteous and holy habits in your mind and in your actions that's how you're going to defeat the enemy and all the things that's around us is coming at you left and right. This is practice. 
of his law, statutes, commandments underneath the new covenant in Yahusha. He will reveal all these things to you. And uh, you, you just got to practice them over and over and pick yourself up if you fall over and over until you get it right. And know that he's going to get it right. He's going to make things right in you. Don't lose faith. Don't lose hope. Just hold fast what you got. No matter what you're seeing here on TV. And uh, no matter what you hear and see on YouTube as well. Stay underneath his wing. And uh, let him lead and guide you into holiness and righteousness, brothers and sisters. And remember, your brother Jed and I is here to help you. Hit me up an email if you need to talk to me. Send me your phone number and I will uh, will address whatever you need to you know get addressed and um, if I don't have the answers we'll get them we'll pray about them and we'll get the answers two stand two coming together the most are going to be in the midst and with that I'm going to say Shalom brothers and sisters